of course, you guys know I'm an Alabama fan. Chris is an LSU fan. And Alabama won last night 20-14. to 14. Uh, Alabama averaged .2 yards per carry last night, only totaled six rushing yards on 26 carries. They threw the ball. Bryce Young did 24 out of 37 times, 302 yards, two touchdowns. The fake punt early in this game, that jump pass, that was a brilliant, brilliant decision by Coach O and Jake Peets. Let you know that this was going to be a dogfight for sure. LSU, five out of seven on fourth down. They decided that they were going to go for it, and they were going to go and try and get this win. They did have two turnovers that led directly to 13 Alabama points, gave Alabama short fields, and that was basically the difference in the ball game. I my So from the Alabama side, I would not be surprised to see both Bill O'Brien and Doug Marone gone after this season. There does not seem to be uh, a lot of, again, the, the buzzword from the beginning of the show, there's, there is a lack of consistency with the Alabama offense. And part of it is that there's no leaders, right? There's nobody on that offensive line. There's nobody in the receiving court. There's nobody that is a vocal stand-up leader. And they had that in spades last season. Now, it does take time to develop that. But part of me wonders how difficult the transition from the NFL back to college is for two guys that have been in the NFL for so long. Now, that's just a a hypothetical whatever situation because it doesn't look like they get along. It doesn't look like Bill O'Brien is doing what Saban wants to do, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll see what happens with that. I A win is a win. But this is not a very good Alabama team. Alabama is not number two in the country, or at least they don't deserve to be. And we said as much after the CFP rankings on Tuesday. Alabama was the default answer. They didn't want to put Cincinnati up there. They didn't want to give Michigan State the number two spot after like squeaking by a win over Michigan. Like I, I guess Alabama was the default, but they are not the number two team in the country. This team will lose again. I said it last week that Auburn is going to beat them in the Iron Bowl, And I fully believe it. This team is not very good. Uh, On the other side, LSU, if they had put forth that kind of effort in multiple other games this year, I think that they would be in a much better position. I don't know that O would still have his job, but I think he'd be a lot closer. This That looked like a good team last night that was aggressive and fought hard and really wanted to win. And I don't know that I've seen that out of them every weekend. Uh, Chris, go ahead, jump in. Give me, give me your thoughts here. I mean, it looks like same old LSU, no quarterback, bad offense. Just we're used to having a dominant run game that we can rely on outside of the Joe Burrow years. My entire life, LSU's offense has been just basically awful. And usually a, a stud running back or two or three will carry them. Hey, do you, and, do you uh, think, and, I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you think Tyrion Davis price is a, I think he could be a stud, man. Like I think they well, found yes. something with him. So well, they didn't find anything with him. The kid's a stud. I know, the but kid they, is an absolute stud. They didn't but play he's him the, until he's he's one, and the offensive line's not great. And so, what he gets, he makes, and it's hard to do that week in and week out, play in and play out. You could do that a couple of times a game, but you can't do that for an entire sixty minutes. You just can't. Yeah. You need something in the way football is played today. You need something from the quarterback position, and we just don't have it. We haven't had it my entire life, and I don't expect to have it much after that, unless somebody comes in that's an offensive mind that can recruit. But until that day comes, we're just going to have to be the team that wins with defense and running the football. But we got to figure out a way to get back to running the ball. You talked about Alabama not being very good. I, I haven't been impressed with Alabama the entire year. There are two really bad football teams that you were given wins to 100% because the SEC just props up the brands and continues to give you every call in the world. You should have lost to LSU last night. You should have lost to Florida week two or three or whatever that was. And both of those teams are God awful. They're just God awful. And, and so you don't, you're, you're not just supposed to not only have the one loss, you should have two other losses to two terrible football teams. You're, you're no, you're no different than, than, you know, the, the number 12th team in the country or, or 15th team in the country. You, you just got a big brand and you got a you got all the best players and you have all the best coaches. You're, you, you know, you complaining about, you know, Bill O'Brien and, and he, he just ain't getting it done. 
this guy's an offensive genius. He knows what he's doing about bringing an offensive end. I don't know, is it a thing where, you know, is it too complicated for the Alabama guys because they're all young and they're pretty inexperienced and they don't know how to run these offenses? I don't know that. I don't know, is it a thing where he's trying to give – save him what he wants, but also do some of what he thinks is the right thing to do. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I know this guy knows how to coach football. Okay. I know that you, you have nine guys on your offensive staff that are all grossly overqualified for the position that they have. And, and so you can't blame it on play. It, play calling didn't hurt you last night. Okay. No, 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 hurt it wasn't, you all it wasn't year. play call. It, it like bottom line, like the offensive line is not good. Now, when you lose as many guys as they have, then yeah, like that makes sense, right? It, we we saw it with LSU coming off of the the 2019 season. Well, Alabama off the 2020 season lost a bunch of dudes off that offensive line. Uh, last night they were losing their or they missed their uh, center. You know, and he was out for the ball game. There was a a lot that that we as you know Alabama were missing on the offensive line. But the offensive line has not been good all season. Like they're a, they are not a good offensive line and. Yeah. I think the thing with college teams that's different, maybe there's some of it with the NFL. Uh, chemistry is so, so important. And there does not appear to be very much of it on the Alabama sideline right now. And and what I saw from LSU uh, that I have not seen, you know, it, now this was a team in LSU that was missing a ton of dudes, but those dudes looked like they were together, Right. I don't know that I've playing seen. hard. They just don't have a lot of talent. I mean, like I right. said, we've but it, got, that, but we've got one star on offense right now, and that's it. There was there was chemistry on that LSU mm. sideline. Those it guys haven't guys, played well together, and they guys haven't played a lot together. Right, but it looked like they were at least they were all together pulling the same way. You right. know why that is, though, Gary? Because you got a bunch, of, you got eleven guys on one side that aren't super talented, and nobody in the country thinks a lot of them, and so they have to work together. And you got eleven guys on the other side that all think they're stars because right. they all got a shitload of stars on the back of their name, and they all think that they should be the heralded one. And you know what? It just doesn't work that way. And so they're all playing the best they can play, but they don't care about the guy next to them. And those other eleven, they got no choice because they're not good. Yeah, I can see that. I can see, it. and that's that's where the but chemistry stuff coaching. comes in. And there's no there's no coaching that can get that out of those guys. Well, but they've been able that, to do it in the past, right? Like, there's it, it, unless it's just guys that aren't willing to buy in, and that's that's what you got to figure out. So, I, either way, Alabama's not a very good football team. LSU is better than they have been this season. LSU's I, not better than they have been. They're just not, Gary. That's a bad football team that went in and and they call. A, a good team sleeping. Okay. You look yeah, like shit yeah. and you're sleepwalking through a game. You don't care to be there. You yeah. think it should be handed to you on a silver platter. The whole country just spent an entire week telling you you're the second best team in the country. All those guys were just smelling their own ass the entire week. It's entirely possible. That, that Alabama-Tennessee game, uh, it ended up being a 28-point uh, spread between them, but uh, that should have been a whole lot of signs because Tennessee was – I mean, it was a seven-point ball game in the fourth quarter. Like Tennessee just yeah. ran out of gas, so oh, yeah. you got any other like any final thoughts on that one before we before we move off of it? No, I mean it's really frustrating to to try. It's really frustrating to to, to watch your team and and any other team, by the way, compete against a team that has all the best players and all the best coaches, and they get every damn call you could possibly imagine. It's really really frustrating. And even last night, ESPN, which they're pretty bad about just kind of keeping their mouth shut when the refs blow something. I mean, they were just like, oh, the blatant hold that they didn't call. Like, they, I've never heard Chris Fowler say that before for any team. Not, not that he's shilling for Bama or somebody else. I've never heard him say that. And I've watched a ton of Chris Fowler called football games. A blatant call right there. They're just not going to call. They're just not going to call that. And I'm just thinking, yeah, we've been watching this shit for a decade. What well, hell for two decades? It's really hard to beat somebody who's already better than you at everything. And they get everything to go their way. So, yeah, if they lose the game, everybody on that sideline should be fired. All those players should be let go. Just to hell with them. Because you get everything given to you. That's frustrating. Yeah, I can, That's I really can frustrating. It. Yeah, I can, I can certainly I can see where that would come from. I mean, there's not much else to say on this one. Uh, Alabama could not run the football. LSU... Adjusted, adjusted yards, Alabama got 28 yards. 
They got 28 yards going forward. Yeah, yeah. Because if, college if you football take away is the dumb sacks. and they take sacks away from, from regular yardage. That's not how math is supposed to work, but college football seems like it's too complicated to do it the right way. But yeah, they, they got 28 yards rushing. That's unbelievable. That's yeah. unbelievable. So it was uh, 28 yards rushing on, let's see, 13 and 2, 15, 16, 17 carries. That's I mean, amazing. Uh, had two carries from two different wide receivers that netted us one yard. Roy Dell Williams only ran the ball twice, and they only ran the ball with Brian Robinson 13 times for 18 yards. I'm sure Young is an unbelievable talent, and in two years when he's a junior, he's going to be amazing. But right now, if you pressure him, if guys aren't wide-ass open, when guys are wide open, you could pressure him all day long. He's going to sling the ball out there, and they're going to go catch it because they're five-star athletes, and they're just freaks, okay? Yeah. But if anybody is – if they are covered at all, at all, and he has to make an accurate throw under pressure, it is, it is going to the ground. It's I, just going in the ground. I told you when we did our preview on Friday's show, the matchup. Do you remember what I told you the matchup of this game was going to be? Yeah, yeah. LSU's pass rush against Alabama's weak offensive line, yep. and that's what it was the whole ball game. And yeah, I just thought it's so it's frustrating. It's not frustrating for me because it was it was glorious to see, but it's strange to see a guy like Bryce, who who is, I guess, I guess when you're when you got a clean pocket and you're doing everything, everybody loves a clean pocket. Man, when that guy gets pressured. He falls to pieces. He falls to pieces. Yeah. I mean, he's he's young. But now, I wonder, I, I will say I wonder this. can you coach that out of a kid? Yes, you can. Because also, like, he, it depends on how you pressure, right? Like, Tom Brady does not like guys that rush him directly up the middle, but he can handle it but when they're going to that. Nobody understand. likes that. Right, right, right. Like, that's but, not a Tom, Tom Brady didn't have the patent on that. I, I no quarterback in the history of the world wants you to come straight up the middle at him. <laughs> because that's the shortest distance between two lines. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is he if you look at his numbers when pressured throughout the entire season, he has been like top two or three in the country as far as his QBR under pressure. He has hit tons of I mean, his completion percentage is crazy. Like his yeah, pressure I watched rate, all those plays. All of those plays are when guys are literally 15 yards wide open. Like, that doesn't mean he's making an accurate throw. He's just he's just throwing, he's just throwing the ball up. up in the air, and nobody is around your freak wide receiver who's able to go make adjustments because they're not being covered. They're just wide open. That's not on the quarterback. I mean, those could all be th- just throwaways because if somebody was covered, they could, A, half of them could be picks if somebody was covered. But the wide receivers are just so athletic that they bail him out. Could you could you imagine what this Alabama offense would be like if they did not get Jamison Williams out of the portal? I mean, he had 10, huh. care, or 10 uh, receptions for 160 yards and a touchdown last night. It's supposed to be the best targets. wide receiving core we've ever seen. Right, and, and none of the young guys – uh, are are anywhere to be found? Oh, but come on, but who, anyway. dude, you've got three of the best wide receivers in the league, though. Come on, man. I don't want to hear you complain but, that nobody else is stepping up. Yeah, but I'm who's sorry? The, hold on, I'm who's sorry that your all world wide receivers aren't doing enough for you. But who who is the third one? I mean, you got John Mechie and you got Jamison Williams. Okay, well, that's I'm sorry. Well, that's that's the thing. Like that's Alabama is used to having a plethora of of options, and there are no options right now. Right. So oh, there's God. Everybody <laughs> in the country right now doesn't care about your your. You've got you've got the number one, or maybe like the you have two of the top five wide receivers in the country. I'm I'm really sorry. That's not enough for you. That's yeah. No, I'm, you I'm know what? You, that's what I'm saying. Quarterback needs more than that. That guy sucks. That's and he better be glad he chose to go to Alabama because if he'd have went to USC, he'd be hot garbage right now. But some NFL team is going to look at all these numbers. They're going to beat off in a closet and get all excited about it. And then they're going to draft him, and they're going to find out he's trash when he gets out here with regular rando dudes. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, and and that was That's my point exactly. To all of the Alabama guys. That was my point exactly was Jamison Williams. Without him, I don't know what – this receiving core is because they have chosen it is going to be Jamison Williams and John Mechie. They they had 28 targets between the two of them out of 37 passes last night. So, and it's been like that all season. Let's 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 get off of this one. Let's let's move on to the Big 10. We we spent a good 15 minutes on that. I feel good about uh, about that much time. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at @garywce at Chris B. Giannini, 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.